Patrick Brown, and this is Scripture versus Scripture. And today we're going to talk about who do we follow? Who do we follow? Um, uh, continuing my talk about the uh, institution of the church today, how uh, the institution of the church is not the church that God has outlined in his word, that they are imposters, that the whole setup is wrong as far as the finances, as far as the, who, who we follow and all that. So uh, this is um, my second video uh, on this uh, nature. Uh, taking a lot of um, the information, uh, a lot of things I'm going to be reading out of this book, A Whitewash Church, Call for Church Reformation, written by Patrick Brown, uh, yours truly. And I'm going to expose the lies and the falsehood of a lot of things that we see in our church today and hope that you make a decision to follow the true church of God, which is still active. There's very few people in far between who are operating in the church. I do believe because the Bible is plain about the broad road which leads to destruction and the skinny straight one that leads to life. Very few people are on that road, but I am here trying to make sure that no one has an excuse not to be on that road. Now, who do we follow? Is it your pastor? Is it the, the, the denomination that you're part of? No, we follow Christ. And where these institutions or people deviate from him, we do not follow them. All right. The Bible says plainly, Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. All right. If you don't follow Christ, you don't follow him. You follow who follows Christ. That makes them a leader or follower. Now, I'm going to take up again in this book. Uh, and I talked about how I found out that the way church taught tithing was wrong, was was a scam, which is a way to take people's money and enrich the pastor or and enrich people in the uh, church because tithing again, and yeah, I have a video on this, I'll keep saying it, is not money, it is food, it's livestock, and it is uh, grain, right, and crops. Yeah, so I'm going to take up here when I found the deception of the church, what did I do about it right now? Here we go. When I learned that, when I learned what the Bible taught regarding giving, I did not stand in the pulpit and ran about the ills of tithing, saying the pastor and the church leadership while heretics. I waited until after the service and took my concerns to the pastor behind closed doors, basically in his office. My goal was not to embarrass, but to remind him of the true context of scripture. Even if someone does not agree with you, if you see they are in error, it is your job to lovingly attempt to reason with them. Christian, all right, believers, followers of the way. Okay, again, I don't believe in the term Christian. It's a derogatory term. I am a follower of the way, but I do know most people are going to use that term as Christian. So I want us to stay on the same page of who I'm talking about. Children of God, it is your job when you see error to bring it to someone's attention. Do not let any man tell you uh, 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 snow you and thinking that, oh, he's not supposed to be questioned or he's not supposed to follow something that you know to be biblical. It is your duty to bring it to, to his attention lovingly, but to bring it to his attention nevertheless. Right. I made my case known. And even though I did not agree with his solution, which was to do nothing. My country was clear. Right? So I brought it to his attention about the way they taught tithe or the way they presented it to the people when they took up the offering plate. Basically, they read Malachi chapter three, verse eight. Right. It talks about will a man rob God? Yeah, you have robbed me. Where in have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. Then it goes on to say, You are cursed with a curse. Now, all this had nothing to do with money and had nothing to do with a New Testament believer. Why? It is old covenant, not new covenant, and nothing to do with a new covenant believer. Yet, they would read this all the time and try to scare people into giving that I had a problem with. All right. So, what happens from here on is between him and God. What happens from then on is between me and God. If God is pleased or displeased with us, we will one day know. During my time as a minister, I have noticed that there are a few types of people in the world. Three types. We're going to go with these three types. Pay attention, please, to these three types of people. The first are those who are ignorant of the truth and wish to stay that way. They don't read the scriptures. They don't care about reading the scriptures. They just want to follow somebody 
do whatever they say, and they're content with that. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. This is Romans 22. These are those individuals that refuse to read anything that might take them out of their comfort zones. You see some people who really don't care what scripture says. They just don't want to be uncomfortable. Right. If the church has a annual picnic, they want to the picnic every year. If the church has a past anniversary day, they want to the pastor anniversary day. If the church says sit on the pews, uh, the, the high earners sit on the first pew, the second highest earners, excuse me, the second highest givers sit on the first pew, the next highest givers sit on the next pew. And they just want things to operate as status quo and pretty much do what the pastor says, irregardless. They just want to stay in their comfort zones. All right. That's the first type. The second of those who know the truth and choose to ignore it, instead referring the favor and popularity of leadership and tradition. Okay, now, there's those that don't read scripture, don't know any better, that's following along. Then there are those who do know what scripture says, and they follow along because they want the pastor to like them, they want the congregation to like them, they want to move up the, the chain of the, being a minister of music. It's not just a choir member or whatnot. These are the people who, uh, know the truth, but they don't think it's worth causing a ruckus or a ripple, or they have their own uh, agenda in mind as far as moving up the church ladder, okay? Now, there are those people we're talking about here. A shame on those people, because if you know better, you should do better, right? And if you're not man, if you can kill a body and have no more that he can do, Fear God, who has the power, and who, after he is killed, can cast into hell. Right? Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Yep, some people just want to be religious, but not truthful in their pursuit of God. A pursuit of a man-made religion, and that, my friends, is what we have today man-made religion. These are those that say within themselves, I know what the Bible says, and it says such and such, but that's not important. Why should we fight over such essentials? All right. They say, well, I know the Bible says this, but you know what? Why should we fight over such essentials? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible says, <laughs> why call me Lord and do not what I say? It don't say, why call me Lord and do what the pastor say? Why call me Lord and do what the denomination says? It says, do not what I say. We are there to worship and follow Christ and him alone, which he has outlined in his word. All right? Now, let's talk about the third group. Third group of those who seek to hear the truth so they can live in it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. This is James 1 and 22. And they said, nope, we're going to be doers and not hearers only. We know the truth, but we're going to call you to the task. That is the group of people I hope I'm talking to and addressing today. That is the group of people I hope I can turn you into if you're not that group of people. Every little thing God wrote matters. If it didn't matter, he wouldn't have wrote it. He wouldn't have wrote it, right? All the illustrations and all the measurements that he gave to the ark, he gave it because it mattered. All those directions and dimensions and, and gold and, and that he wanted gathered for the building of the temple or the, or the tabernacle, he gave those directions because it mattered. When he told the uh, Israelites to put the blood over the doorpost so the angel of death could pass by, he gave the directions for that blood because those directions mattered. I don't understand why so many people today think that God's directions and instructions do not matter. They do matter, and that is why the church today that we're looking at is not the church that God called out for. It is an imposter. They are not the true followers of God because they think the instructions of God himself, who is the author of the church and the builder and designer of it, does not matter. The doers of the word of God, these are the true children of God. One reason Christians don't call 
more of our leaders into account because many of us don't spend enough time in the Bible to know it for ourselves. So we don't know what we see. We're looking at it as wrong. We don't know these things are wrong. We don't know the teaching of the tithes are wrong. We don't know. Okay. When I had a problem with them tithes, the people were teaching and I went to the pastor in private behind them closed doors. I told him my problem. I told him what it was and I did not recant anything to this day. I think I did the right thing. And when uh, everything hit the fan or when people uh, took sides on the issue, I do not believe that we as believers need to feel bad about anything we do that is standing up for the word of God. We, and my prayer is, and I'm, I'm going to say this, my prayer is that each and every Christian had the boldness, the tenacity, and the knowledge of Luther. First of all, you have to study your, your, your scriptures. You have to study your scriptures and know what you're talking about in order to make a stand for God. The uh, Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. People don't know what the scriptures say, therefore they can't defend the scriptures. People don't know what the scriptures say, therefore they can't make a stand on scriptural things. But once we do that, we can make a stand for Christ. I hope this lesson has been edifying to you. I'm Patrick Brown, and this was Scripture versus Scripture.